My name is Jeff Suhu. I'm the Assistant Dean of Admissions at the University of Colorado School of Medicine. Uh, I've been in the role for about two years now. Uh, I'm an ophthalmologist by training and still practice medicine um, and then do other stuff on the side like admissions. Um, I, I have had a number of different roles and involvement in medical education. Of course, admissions uh, deals with you know pre-medical and undergraduate medical students. I also work in the GME space. I'm the residency program director for ophthalmology at the University of Colorado School of Medicine. And I've also served as a physician advisor for medical students at the School of Medicine. So I've sort of been able to, to get involved in different arenas. Um, my involvement with admissions actually started when I was a medical student. Where I went to medical school, I was a student member of the admissions committee. And I really liked the process of talking to candidates and learning about them and why they were passionate about medicine. And so when I joined the faculty at the University of Colorado, I asked if they needed volunteers to do interviews. And um, I think I uh, volunteered a lot. And so they said, oh, well, why don't you volunteer for this other committee and this other committee? And it sort of snowballed uh, and eventually led to this role. So um, it's been a, a great journey, I think, my advice or you know sometimes people say you know how did you end up in this position and really the things that i've done is have been to say yes to things that interest me um and think and do things that i like to do and not necessarily with any specific end goal in mind when i volunteered to do interviews for medical students this was not my uh, anticipated result uh, it's been a, a welcome surprise That's a difficult one because I think applicants can stand out in a variety of ways. Um, I've often talked about applicants that are, you know, really well balanced where they've sort of checked the boxes that you historically hear about, where they have a strong academic record, they've done well on standardized tests and they've, you know, performed uh, well in community service activities or leadership activities, research, whatever it might be. And they've but they've done those things in a way that's authentic and longitudinal. Uh, and then I see candidates as well that are what I call well unbalanced, where they're really strong in one particular subdomain of those things. Um, and that because they put so much time into one thing, it's potentially limited how much time they've been able to do other things. So we try and contextualize people's experiences. Um, I think what stands out for me the most about applicants is when those experiences are varied and when they inform the candidate's decision in a sort of nuanced and reflective way. Um, so I often talk about an experience can be the same thing on paper, but the way a candidate talks about it can really be different. Um, and so I'm looking for that reflection piece because I might see a candidate who was the captain of the soccer team, let's say, and that's a great leadership experience. But then I ask them, well, tell me what you learned from that or how did that change who you are as a leader? And I can get very different responses, right? I can get someone who's like, Oh, it was cool. We won the state championship and it was fun. Uh, and I can get someone who says, you know, when I led my first practice, I realized that what different groups of players wanted wasn't necessarily the same. And so what I did was uh, I sent out an anonymous survey to get feedback. And then we tried a bunch of different things. And it was an iterative process that I learned that, you know, leadership isn't just about having a vision for how things should be, but it's also about being able to incorporate other people's visions into the experience. And again, on paper, those are the same experience, but one of them has a reflective and growth mindset component and one of them doesn't. Yeah, I mean, I, I think I've I've had sort of different views of it, of course, as an, just an interviewer and then sort of now being um, sort of more behind the scenes and, and seeing the big picture of the whole process. I think the applicants on the whole have more resources, even such as yours, and they, they have more knowledge. Um, and there's Student Doctor Net, and there's Reddit, and there's things that didn't exist when I was applying to medical school. And many of those things can be helpful, right, about logistics of when to apply or where to apply or, you know, how to get things done. But there can also be a lot of uh, noise in those platforms. And so trying to separate, you know, the truth from the non-truths can be difficult. Um, but the, and the applicants are just much, much more sophisticated. They're thinking, three steps ahead of where I was when I was applying to medical school. Um, I just wanted to get into medical school and be a doctor. Um, I had never heard of step one or step two. Um, I didn't, my current specialty, ophthalmology, I had actually never heard of before I went to medical school. I didn't know it was a medical specialty. Um, and so I think the applicants nowadays just have a lot more exposure and have thought more carefully about the field of medicine, um, mostly in positive ways, sometimes in ways that are a little bit detrimental if they get too in the weeds for, for certain details. Um, you know, at the end of the day, I think most, most medical schools are more alike than they are different. Um, and so I think sometimes candidates get bogged down in some of the details. 
So of course, this, it's a, I'll give a biased answer. Uh, I love our medical school. I wouldn't work at our medical school and I wouldn't hold the role I do at our medical school if I didn't believe in our people and our mission and the way that we train future physicians. Um, I will say something that definitely makes us stand out is our curriculum. Um, we just underwent a pretty significant curriculum reform that was several years in the making. Um, and we're one of the only, if not the only school in the country that has moved to an all LIC or longitudinal integrated clerkship model for the clinical training year. Um, so we no longer have any traditional block clerkships. It's all a longitudinal process. Um, and that's been shown to be um, better for education in a variety of ways um, but, and has uh, been shown to increase empathy for students during school and decrease burnout. I usually tell students a few things. One is to get lots of advice because if you are just talking to the, you know, pre-medical office at your undergraduate institution or you're just talking to your friend's parent who went to medical school 30 years ago or whatever it might be or, or they're just talking to you or me, you know, they're going to get one idea about what medicine is or how to navigate the process. Um, so talk to a lot of different people um, at different stages of the process. Someone that got into medical school last year and someone that finished medical school 30 years ago and everything in between as much as you can. And the nice thing is because of those platforms I mentioned earlier, you know, even if you don't personally know anyone that's a physician, and I didn't when I was growing up, you can still tap into some networks that way. I mean, I see current medical students commenting on Reddit or Student Doctor Net all the time. And they're more than happy to say, you know, this was my experience applying. This is what I wish I had done differently, those kinds of things. So taking those things in and listening, but recognizing that not everybody's experience is going to be the same as yours. The other thing that I think is really hard for students to understand is just the, the scale of the applicant pool and how good it is. Um, I think it's very tempting as a student to say, you know, I've done all the right things, right? I've done well in the MCAT, I have a good GPA, I was president of this club and I did, did this research project, you know, I should get into medical school. And yes, statistically you should, and yet you may not, um, because the numbers, at least at any individual school are never in your favor, right? There's no medical school where most of the applicants get in. Um, and so you have to apply appropriately and apply broadly, and then you have to be, you know, sort of critical about where might your deficiencies be in your own application. Um, and it's hard, it's very personal when it's your life and your activities that you put down on paper. Um, but, you know, the reality is there are more applicants than there are spots for medical school. So it's a really competitive process. And I think depending on where you're coming from, if you've been an all-star and a superstar at your particular uh, little part of the world, when it's scaled out into the larger realm of uh, applications for medical school, you might just be, you know, another applicant out there. I, like I said, I think the curriculum in our medical school is unique. Um, I'm biased uh, because I trained here and I work here and I know how invested the people are in the success of, of medical students and, and training future physician leaders. Um, I think what I would say from, you know, I'm, I'm lucky in my role, I get a seat at the table for, you know, pretty much all the sort of major committees at the medical school. And um, I think what I would tell you if you could see behind the curtain is just how much people care. Um, I think it feels like a really impersonal process, both on the admission side and, you know, even as a student sometimes, right? You, Why do we have to do this assignment? Or why do we have to do X, Y, Z? This is a waste of my time or whatever. Um, you know, everything that we're doing and all of our sort of thought processes and then all of our evaluation and changes that happen, it's all framed around, you know, what's best for the students and their education. Um, and I have never seen a group of people come together um, with a common purpose like we do within the, the medical education department at our medical school. Um, and the central focus is always, you know, how do we educate people to be better doctors for the, the population? <laughs>